Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss FICA. FICA is known as the social security for short, social security tax. Now it's not only social security, it's technically social security and Medicare, but for short, we're going to say social security. Now, why do we have to learn about whether we have an employee or a contractor when it comes to FICA? Because it makes a difference whether as an employer, you are paying an employee or you're paying a contractor. It makes a difference to your payroll taxes. And this is what we will discuss first. First, we are going to discuss whether you have an employee or a contractor. How does the employer, the company, determine whether they are dealing with an employee or a contractor? Then we're going to see how what difference does it make on FICA. Now, you might be saying, this is easy. I either have an employee or I hired someone as a contractor. Well, most of the time, it's easy. 99% of the time, it's easy. Sometime, the employer might try to classify an employee as a contractor. You would say, why would that? Well, you're going to see why when it comes to FICA taxes, as well as other taxes, but specifically FICA. So let's start by determining if a person providing a service for a business is an employee or an independent contractor, because it makes a difference to, to payroll. Well, what we would look at, what would the IRS looks at if they are looking at these at this situation? Well, they would look at factors such as who controls the work. If the business has the right to control what and how the worker done, does their job, it looks like we have an employee. So if, the, if your boss, if the company that you're working for tells you exactly what you need to do, at what point, how to do it, then you are an employee. On the other hand, if you're a contractor, they would say, this is what we want to have done. Go ahead and do it. So you have more control. This includes control over methods and manner of work. But that's not the only thing they look at. They would, they would look to see if the worker own their own business or do they own the tools that they are working with at the job. If they do, let's assume you hired someone and they have a company. You're constructing a home and they have a company and they do construction for other people. Where they're not your employees, they're your contractors. So if they are independent and in how they conduct their business when they show up to work, how they do the work, the tools that they use is theirs, then you're looking at a contractor. You would look at the method of payment. How are you paying those employees? Being paid by the job, it means you're done with the work, that's it, you're done. That's how I'll pay you. Well, you're looking at a contractor. While payment by hourly wage or salary, you're looking at an employee. Also, the length of relationship. Uh, are they working for you for a few weeks, few months, or does this like, it looks like it's permanently. If it's permanent, then they are employees. Duration of the job. The length of the job can also be indicative whether the person is an employee or a contractor. Now, the IRS don't look at one factor. They would look at all factors. And based on these factors, we'll classify if there's any dispute whether the individual is an employee or a contractor. Also, benefit. Are you providing benefit to those employees like health insurance or retirement plan? If you are, it looks like you have an employee. Why do we have to determine whether we have an employee or a contractor? Because it makes a difference on FICA taxes. Let's now go ahead and start to discuss FICA. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Once again, FICA stands for the Federal Ins Insurance Contribution Act. This is a U.S. law. It benefits workers and their dependent in the event of retirement, disability, or death. It also provides medical insurance for retirees. Simply put, this, this, the FICA is also known as the O. ASDI. It's part of that. The old age survivor and disability insurance. Technically, we're looking at here, it's so, social security. So FICA is composed of two things, FICA social security, SS, and FICA Medicare. Now FICA, when we say social security, basically what we are, what we are discussing, once you heard the word social security, mainly we are looking at retirement. People that work they have social security payments once they retire. Now, also, if they die early, they have uh, they have death benefit that goes to the survivor, spouse, and children. 
uh, if they got disabled, Social Security will pay them. But 90 to 95 percent of the payment in Social Security goes to retiree. Now, don't quote me 100 percent, but the vast majority goes to retirees. Now, also, the FICA has a Medicare. The Medicare is the insurance, the health insurance for who? For the retirees, the health insurance for the disabled. So FICA is composed of two components, FICA Social Security and FICA Medicare. Who would have to participate in FICA? All employees, regardless whether you're a full-time or part-time, you pay, you contribute toward FICA. That's including if you're self-employed, self-employed individual, they will have to participate in FICA if their net earnings, their net income exceeds $400. Net earnings is what? Revenues minus deduction minus expenses. If this amount, $400 or more annually, and this has been for years at this level, $400, it could change, then you'll have to pay FICA. There are certain exceptions for some people that don't pay FICA. Again, when I say FICA, you could say Social Security, but it's not technically true. It's also Medicare. There are certain exceptions, such as government employees, religious ministers, who may be exempt from FICA. You might be saying, why? Remember, when you pay toward your Social Security, you're paying toward your retirement. You're financing some sort of a retirement income. Religious people, they have their own program, their own religious organization. Government employees, same thing. They have what's called a pension. They have some sort of a retirement plan. Now, who funds this program? So who funds FICA? So we need to have money in this program. So eventually we'll pay it out in terms of benefit. Well, the funds for FICA benefits comes from taxes levied on income from people that earn that income from labor. So when you work, if you look at your paycheck, if you look at your paycheck, I'm going to show you the rate shortly. You're going to have, if you're working in the U.S., obviously, you're going to have money deducted from your paycheck. How much? We're going to see in a moment. So any wages, salaries, tips, bonuses, and commissions you earn, you have to pay taxes on. Is it only you? Actually, both. You as an employee and your employer. So you pay 50% of the tax. The employer pay 50%. But how much is the tax? We're going to, we're going to see in a moment. How about if you're self-employed? If you're self-employed, you're both the employee and the employer. So if you're the employee and the employer, you pay both. Now you're going to see that if you're if you are self-employed, you're going to get a deduction, 50% deduction because you're paying yourself. Now yourself will be an expense in terms of social security. And we'll see that in a separate recording, but basically you'll get a deduction if you're self-employed. You pay 100%, then you will get a deduction. Contribution. Who contribute? Who funds? Again, employee and employer. How much? Now we're going to look at the contribution of the employer. First of all, the employer are required to match FICA contribution of their employees. So whatever the employee pays, how much? We're going to see in a moment. If they pay, I don't know, X, X amount of dollar, the employer will have to match it. How, how, how would the employee pay? It's the employer's responsibility. Notice the word must. We don't use the word must a lot. Employers must withhold the employee's portion of FICA taxes and also pay their own matching account. So they take money from your paycheck. They match it. They have to take the money. Mandatory withholding. Liability for not withholding. What happened if the employer, your company, did not withhold Social Security? Well, if the employer fails to withhold the employee's shares, they must still pay for it. They can seek reimbursement, but they have to pay for it. So, if an employer chooses to pay the employee shares, it's deductible for the employer and counts as a taxable income for the employee. So let's assume the empl employer, your company, did not withheld the money. They pay it. Well, if they pay it, it's deductible for the company. Deductible for the company. Okay, if deductible for the company, if the employer pay it, it's taxable to you. Although you didn't get it, they just paid, paid it, well, they paid it on your behalf. It's as if they paid you, then they took it away. So it's taxable to you. Penalties. Employers do face penalties for late FICA deposits for failing to provide their, tax, provide their taxpayer identification number and the amount. So the employer, some most employers will have to file quarterly, but some will have to file annually. You'll have to file and submit payments on a regular basis about FICA. And we don't discuss this in here. You know, if you're taking a payroll course or in financial accounting, we will discuss this a little bit further 
the process of this. The, the employee contribution. What's the employee contribution? And this is as of 2023. You could be looking at this recording in a, in, in a separate year, in a different year. Um, it doesn't make a difference because the rate might change, but the concept is the same. Employee contributes 6.2, and this has been for years. So you have to pay 6.2% of your wages. Hold on a second. On all your wages? No. Up to a certain amount. Again, for 2023, that, that certain amount is $160,200. Let me compute this as a dollar amount and tell you what does that mean? What does the limit mean? So if the limit is 160200 we multiply it by 6.2%. Any particular employee, they will have to pay per year $9,932.40. This is the maximum amount that an individual pay in Social Security taxes because once, well, yes, Social Security taxes because the 6.2 is the for, for Social Security. So once this employee earned this additional dollar, 160201 that additional dollar is tax-free for Social Security from here till infinity. That's for, remember, FICA is two parts. FICA is two parts, Social Security and Medicare. So I told you the rate for Social Security, 6.2%. Remember, this is the employee share. Then the employer will have to pay. Let me put it in a different color. The employer will have to pay. So we said um, this is FICA. Let's do it again. FICA, Social Security. The rate is 6.2%. And we have Medicare. We'll talk about Medicare shortly. Then your employer will have to match so it's 6.2 plus 6.2 percent for the employer so you pay 6.2 percent as an employee the employer will pay 6.2 percent up to 160,200. how about the other taxes the 1.45 for fica medicare the rate is 1.45 who will pay 1.45 percent well the employee will pay and the employer will pay so if we add them up Total is 2.9%. Now, also, if we add this up, 6.2 plus 6.2 is 12.4 total Social Security. Let's go back to FICA Medicare. FICA Medicare, 1.45 on all wages. On all wages. It, in other words, it does not stop. 1.45% forever. Whether you make 160200 or 1600000 or 10600000 you still have to pay 1.45. Now, you might be saying, why? Why the difference? Why do they stop taking Social Security and not, not taking Medicare? I'm going to explain to you why, and I hope that will help you remember. Remember, Social Security is for your retirement. When you retire, you have a limited amount of money. So your payment, your payout... You have a limited payout. So when you retire, uh, you might get paid per month a certain amount of money. And that amount is limited. Even if you contribute a lot of money, for example, these days, it's approximately the maximum per month is around 3000 Around 3000 Don't quote me, you know, could be plus or minus, but it's around 3000 Well, what does that mean? It means although you might have, you might have contributed more or less, there's a limited amount. It doesn't mean everyone gets 3000 but the maximum is 3000 However, Medicare is to take care of your health status after you retire. Well, guess what? You may cost the government $0, you might be healthy, or you may cost the government, uh, let's make it $100 million, $100 million. We really don't know. Therefore, when it comes to Medicare, you, you, people who are working, will contribute as long as they are making a profit versus Social Security, they stop. On top of that, there is an additional tax that they levy, which is additional Medicare tax at 0.9%. In other words, it's not only they stop uh, with Medicare, once you make 200, over 200000 if you are single or two fifty if you're married, married, filing jointly, married couple, then they, in addition to 1.45, they tag on it 0.9%. 0.9 they tag on it 0.9 why because they think you are making a lot of money and you need to contribute more type of earnings included so which earnings are subject to this be careful because this could be a question salaries yes bonuses yes commission yes gifts obviously they're not taxable if you receive them interest not subject not subject to social security and medicare 
dividend not subject to social security and medicare be aware of that be aware of those let me show you a quick example just to kind of let you know how it works let's assume an employee earned one hundred thousand. i'm going to keep it simple just to make the point here what's the employer responsibility the employer responsibility is 6.2 percent which is 6200 what's the medicare employer responsibility 1.45 which is 1450. now is this individual subject to the additional medicare tax and the answer is no because they're below the threshold happens to be 200,000 for individual now this threshold could change from year to year but the 6.2 and the 1.45 those rates been there forever would they change down the road yes i doubt it because they haven't changed in years now this is i'm sorry this is the employee responsibility what's the employer responsibility same responsibility 6.2 which is six they have to match whatever the employee employee did the employee contributed 6200 the employer will contribute 6200 the employee contributed 1450 the employer will contribute 1450 so what's the total contribution the total contribution is 12400 so that's the total medicare um, social security and medicare together everything together social security 12400 medicare 2400 remember when we combine the rate for social security is 6.2 plus 6.2 12.4 percent that's social security medicare 1.45 1.45 ignoring the 0.9 2.9 together it is what is let's take a look at 12.4 12.4 plus 2.9 is 15.3 so together it's 15.3 percent what does that mean it means if you're self-employed you pay 15.3 percent why 15.3 percent because you have to pay your share as the employee your company share as the employer for both social security and medicare and i just showed you how that 15.3 percent came about again you only pay it when you have more than 400 dollars in net profit Net profit means when your revenue exceeds your uh, when your revenues exceeds your expenses. Now these computation are covered a little bit more in depth in other places in reg and on the CPA exam and the TCP CPA exam as well as your tax course. I just gave you an idea so you understand the overall picture. Well, how about the contribution that that's being made to FICA? The contribution is an expense, but to who and when is it a deduction? Well, the employer contribution. Remember, the employer makes a contribution. You make a contribution employer's contribution employer is the company the company that when they pay their share they can deduct that portion as a regular business expense just they they, they have an employee they're paying the fica on behalf of that of that employee it's an expense it's a deduction how about the employee when you as the employee pay that social security tax or medicare not deductible that amount is not deductible anywhere so be careful Social security taxes are not deductible anywhere. How about self-employed individuals? Since self-employed people pay both employers and employee share, they can deduct half of their self-employment when calculating their adjusted gross income. Why? Remember, they pay, they pay for both. They pay for themselves as an employee, as a person, and they pay for their company. So therefore, they can deduct half of that. Let's take a look at the multiple choice questions from farhatlectures.com. What are employers required to do regarding FICA contribution? What are they required to do about FICA contribution? Pay only the employee's portion of FICA. They have to pay it, but is it only? Not only. Withhold and match the employee's FICA contribution. I would say yes, they have to withhold and match. Yes, they have to take the money from the employee's paycheck the employee's portion and they have to match it they have to take it and they have to match it if they don't take it they will be penalized so b looks like a good answer but let's look at c withhold but not match no they have to match match the employee contribution but not withhold not at all they both have to take the employee so when you look at your paycheck let's assume you made a thousand dollar for a particular week they're going to take 6.2 percent they will take 62 dollars from your paycheck they would hold that 62 dollars this is your check your paycheck then the employer will have to come up with $62. So 62 plus 62 is 124, and this will be the Social Security portion. Your portion from your paycheck that they take and the portion that they pay. Just It's an easy, easy concept to 
once you know it, it's easy to remember on the exam. What should you do now? You want to go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs. That's going to help you whether you're studying for your CPA exam, enrolled agent, taking a tax course, invest in yourself. The CPA exam is worth it. Good luck. Study hard. And of course, stay safe.